Hey everyone, Simon here. Um, so a question that I often get is how do we interpret the nakshatras? What are they? And specifically, what are the nakshatra rulers? And this is something that with the spread of YouTube and information from everywhere and everyone having an opinion that, in my opinion, <laughs> has spread uh, a lot of misinformation, particularly uh, with respect to what people call the nakshatra rulers. And by that, meaning the dasha rulers. So Ashvini being ruled by Ketu, Bharani being ruled by Venus. and this is, in my opinion, totally wrong. Totally wrong in the sense that when people say, oh, I'm an Ashwini person, therefore I'm a Ketu person. Or I have my moon in Lagna and Pushya, therefore I'm a Saturn person because Saturn rules Pushya. This is totally wrong. It's completely made up. Now, and it's made up because of an incomplete understanding of something that uh, K.S. Krishnamurti did. Krishnamurti was a brilliant astrologer who used the rulership, the, the association of the Dasha rulers of the nakshatras to make predictions. And so he created a system called Krishnamurti Padati, whereby he could predict when you'd get a job, what your uh, potential spouse would look like, and so on using these associations, uh, specifically the Dasha ruler of a nakshatra, and then its sub-lord as well. And people took that and said, ha, huh, that's pretty interesting. Well, I don't understand sub-lords, but I like this idea that, oh, Ketu rules Ashwini, Venus rules Bharani, and so on. And I'll just use that. And when you do that, you separate the 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 sada you separate the essence of of his system and you mix it up uh, and you put it into another system and it doesn't work so let me give you an example this is the chart for right now as i'm sitting here and let's see the rising nakshatra is bharani so if i click on it now this is the software that i use and it correctly says that the shah ruler is venus bharani ruled by venus but folks i would put it to you that this has very little to do with Venus, but it has everything to do with its deity, Yama, its symbol, vulva, and the womb, and the myths that, have, that go along with those symbols. Um, so, for example, and you can see here, Brihat Samhita says, those who feed on blood and flesh, cruel people. What does Venus have to do with cruelty? those engaged in killing and imprisoning and beating others. This has nothing to do with Venus. So when you say, oh, I'm Bharani, I'm a Venus person, this is totally misleading. Now, yes, Venus is associated with Bharani in the same way that, let's say when you go to a bowling alley or you go to a temple, you leave your shoes at the door and there's somebody there taking care of your shoes. That person doesn't own your shoes, but, but they are the guardians of the shoes, if you will. They're the custodians. And so that's like the, the planetary ruler. They, they really don't have anything to do with your shoes. They are taking care of them. Another way to look at it is if you want to build a house, you hire a contractor. And that contractor is like the planetary ruler. But they don't own your house. They just oversee it. They oversee its construction, an important aspect of the house. And, but it's your house. You're the one who lives in it. So from the standpoint of nakshatras, um, and I don't want to make this answer too long, but the question was, what are the real rulers of the nakshatras? And so I would say the real rulers are, in this case, Bharani nakshatra is Yama. Ashwini is the Ashwin, Ashwini Kumara. Uh, 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 Kritika is Agni, and so forth. It's not the planets. Okay? Now, why do we get things like those who feed on flesh for Bharani? Because it is also an Ugra or a fierce nakshatra. So every nakshatra has a deity, it has a symbol. 
it has qualities associated with it, like Shipra, swift, like um, Stira, fixed. So, so, uh, so th this one has happens to be a fierce nakshatra. So, if, for, even from that qualification, you can get a lot of information. Then they have what's called a basis above and a basis below. You can look into that. Um, they have a shakti. In this case, it's called apabharana shakti, meaning to carry away, to take what's old and get rid of it. So what does that have to do with Venus? Nothing. Oh, well, I'm very artistic and I have Barani nakshatra. Okay, good. This nakshatra is associated with creativity and artistic creativity, but not necessarily because of Venus, because it represents the womb of creation where new life comes forward. In fact, it's the type of creativity that takes its own time and its own shape, like um, like when Michelangelo used to sculpt, uh, he said, I'm releasing the work of art from the rock. This is Apabharana Shakti. I am carrying away everything that is not the sculpture to reveal the sculpture, you see? And it, it also has to do with giving birth, and the thing has to take its own time. Uh, Bharani has to do with projects that take... A lot of time they take their own they take a life of their own if you will um so it's not because of venus necessarily that you're creative it's because of the symbolism of this nakshatra this nakshatra has to do with lawyers also what does venus have to do with lawyers well yama the lord of dharma has to do with the law and what's right Bharani people uh have a strong sense of fairness because often as children they were may be treated unfairly probably by a parent, something you probably didn't know, that doesn't come from Venus. It comes from Yama and the story of Yama. And in fact, I'll be doing a full-on class on, on the nakshatras in the weeks to come uh, with all of these secrets, the, the little things that you probably won't get from the books. Um, and none of the sort of made-up stuff, in my opinion, inappropriate stuff, that gets strewn in there often um, just because people think it fits. Um, so, for example, the next nakshatra is called Kritika, and it has to do uh, with heat and fire and criticism, and it's ruled or presided over by the sun, and people go, oh, that's perfect. Well, no, because it's, it's deity is Agni, and Agni is in a form of the sun, the sun, or the sun is a form of Agni, whichever way you want to look at it. So it's not because it's presided over by the sun that it has to do with digestion and so on and criticism and visual arts and videography and storytelling. It's because of Agni, and Agni has two heads, one to hear one person, the other to tell it to the other. So when you do a ritual, you say something to the fire, you're saying it to the fire so the fire can carry it somewhere else. So Agni is the original microphone. <laughs> so people with strong kritika tell stories. They are become storytellers. Um, they become jyotishis the study, uh, because they study the lights. So anyway, uh, but my point is that some of these do seem to fit. Ardra nakshatra, its dasha ruler is Rahu. And it seems to fit. It makes sense. Ardra is kind of wild and crazy and you know, uh, has troubles with their same-sex parent and so on. But it's not because of Rahu, it's because of Rudra, the deity. And you see this planetary, quote-unquote, rulership break down when you get to nakshatras like Pushya. Pushya's the Shah ruler is Saturn. Pushya has absolutely nothing to do with Saturn. Saturn is constricting, Pushya is nourishing. Anyway, so uh, look at Maga, the next nakshatra, presided over by Ketu. Maga has to do with grand things. The, it's the royal throne, kingdoms. Ketu has nothing to do with kingdoms. Okay, so 
yes, there are some associations you can make, but you have to be careful not to use the planet as a ruler, but to use the deity, to use the symbol, to use the quality, the guna. Is it Satvarajastamas? Each nakshatra even has a yoni, but you got to be careful with, with that as well. The yoni is the animal spirit associated with it, but don't go crazy like, oh, my nakshatra is a rat, so therefore I have rat characteristics. I'm never going to tell the truth. No, 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 that's crap. That yoni is used primarily 90% of the time for compatibility, particularly sexual compatibility. So, also be careful with some of these characteristics, like, like the yoni. Stick with the deity, the symbol, the shakti of each nakshatra, the quality. Is it light, heavy, um, uh, light, fixed, um, uh, um, movable, fierce, or soft, or mixed? Those are the qualities. What is the shakti of the nakshatra? In Kritika is dahana shakti, the shakti to burn or to purify. Um, the shakti of varani is apabharana shakti, to, to remove, and so on. Another thing to remember is that every nakshatra fits within a larger ecosystem, including the sign that it sits in. People often forget this. Now, the nakshatras predate the 12 signs of the zodiac, in fact, so they, they do stand alone. But as we've grown in our understanding of the sky, we've added these 30-degree segments called the rashis. So within Aries, for example, we have three nakshatras. We also have three drekanas. Most people don't really look at the qualities of the drekanas as well. So to follow the example of Bharani, and just to show you how complex it gets without even introducing the planetary rulers, you really don't need them, not for uh, giving the characteristics of the nakshatra. So for example, Bharani falls within Aries, okay? So is it going to have qualities of Aries and Mars? Well, yes, perhaps. Um, namely the cruel quality, right? The... Uh, um, but one thing that will help you figure out what's going to come out, like you see a chart, they have Varani, are they going to be cruel or are they going to be artistic, right? Are they going to have a problem with their parents? Are they going to be a twin? This is another characteristic of this nakshatra because Yama has a twin sister. Um, are they going to be, uh, love cleaning their house? Because the idea of wanting to get rid of stuff that doesn't fit can make people very cleanly. Or are they going to have an oral sex fixation? It's another characteristic. So, <laughs> you, I mean, you can go on and on. One way to know, and I'll give you a clue here, is also look at the drekana. So, Bharani is split between the second and the third drekana of Aries. Uh, meaning that it has the most of it is in the second drekana, but there's a portion in the third. The third drekana is an armed drekana. It's a man holding an axe ready to kill you. Okay, the second drekana is a woman, a beautiful woman, finely dressed, wearing jewelry. So, <laughs> does it depend which drekana a planet or your lagna falls in? Absolutely because it will also help to color the expression of the nakshatra. For example, uh, to give a negative example, Hitler had, what is it, three or four planets, I think, in Aries. They were all in the last and the first drekanas, the warrior, the weapon drekanas, none in the second. I, I'm pretty sure you guys can check me on this. None in the second drekana that was uh, relatively more artistic and peaceful, and perhaps this is why his artistic career never took off, his war career took off, unfortunately, for the rest of the world. So, there are enough hidden and not hidden, obvious um, bits of knowledge and information within the nakshatra, the drekana, the sign, without us having to resort to 
the planetary or dasha ruler. So I would encourage you guys to pay less attention to that and pay more attention to the actual uh, layout of the nakshatra, its deity, its uh, symbol, the shakti, and the quality, the guna that it's associated with. My point being, the ruler of the nakshatra is important insofar as, A, it will determine the dasha. So if you're born with your moon in Bharani, you will start life in a Venus period. That's it. Doesn't mean you look like Venus or you have Venus quality. You're going to be in that Venus period, whatever Venus is doing in your chart. Number two, Krishna more to use that than um, that measurement of time to also create a measurement of space using his uh, sublord system, uh, which can be used then to predict very accurately life events. But beyond that, I would uh, caution you, be careful how you use it. So I hope this was useful. Uh, my little rant on the nakshatras, if you want to get a lot more and to learn the, the secrets, um, again, another overused word, but stuff you probably are not going to get uh, elsewhere about these nakshatras, join me in the class. Go to spirittype.com. Go to the bottom, click subscribe, and I'll be sending out invitations in my newsletter. Okay? Hope this was useful, guys, and um, we'll see you in the next one.